Hey, what's up, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Ringleader. You want to become the next one? Well, first you got to start off by hustling. When you're going to hustle in Ringleader, you're going to need to start off on the streets, and you have to watch out for going to jail. Ringleader is all about collecting as much drugs as you possibly can, as well as other paraphernalia, and then, of course, selling them. So you're going to start with buyers, uh, suppliers, and then head to buyers. It plays from two to five players, and it takes about an hour per player, but you can limit that time frame down to about a half an hour per player with some variants rules. As you play the game, you're simply going to be rolling some dice here and moving along the streets, collecting things you need to collect. Hopefully you're going to advance yourself into a higher society, up to the point where you're basically living large and in charge. Currently right now you're going to start off with pretty much nothing, but as time progresses and if you do well enough, you might end up becoming one of the biggest ringleaders in history. Watch out for jail like I said before, and try and end yourself somewhere in the best parts of town, selling the best type of drugs that you possibly can. Alright, let me go ahead and show what it looks like. So here we have ringleader and everything included in the game and as you can see there's a ton of different boards here there's a for five players and there are five different pawns you can use and you can choose which one you want to use you're also gonna get 13,000 bucks to start the game off and two dice which you'll use to move around the board in a clockwise manner not only that though but it comes with a bunch of other things here these are all the different types of drugs you got weed coke hash opium and of course some magic mushrooms two separate decks of cards the hookup cards and the hook down cards hooking down is never good and if you land on spots that make you draw hook down cards you have to do what they say immediately and they're very very nasty anywhere from losing turns to losing your money and losing your money is really really bad in ringleader all the hookup cards you can choose to save as you land on these certain spaces and which will help you to be able to land on the spaces you need to land on throughout the game these are the four different boards of the game which you'll be using the most of you have prison you have the streets you've got high society and then of course you've got the empire list this has a ton of different passports and the requirements in order to get to all the different countries you'll be buying these throughout the game and this is how you're going to win. If you can acquire all of these different blue cards here, you're going to assess, assess victory along with some other conditions you need to meet. This spinner here is what tells you whether or not you're going to get paid or whether or not you're going to get busted. When you're going on an airport, you might end up having to deal with getting caught with the drugs on you, and that can suck because you're going to go to jail. Over here, you've got the rules for the game, and you've got the extra boards which you'll be using as well. West Coast, East Coast, the Europe board, you've got South America, North America, and of course Asia. These places are pretty much the high-end portion of the game in which you'll be using to them to buy and sell opium magic mushrooms and of course coke uh, weed and hash are the basic things you'll be picking up throughout this game uh, you're also going to get this nice box here and as you can see it looks kind of like a suitcase and when you open it up it actually has a nice little uh, pamphlet inside of it which shows you like looks like it has money on the other side is a certificate of achievement if you manage to successfully complete this game you can go ahead and post this up on social media showing that you successfully became the ringleader of the game. This is everything included. All right, let's come up and tell you how to play. So how do you begin playing ringleader? Well, it's pretty simple. You're going to simply take a pawn and you're going to take 13 grand and then you're going to start off on the streets because the streets is where you begin for any good ringleader, right? And as you're playing the game, you're going to start off on the stash house. With this stash house here, you're going to be moving clockwise after rolling two die. You're going to roll the full movement and move around the board and whatever space you land on is what you're going to have to do. Whether it be a buyer space that people want to buy drugs from you or whether it be a seller space where you need to sell the drugs that you currently have on you. If you've got no drugs, you can't sell. If you got no money, you can't buy. You've got airport spaces here, which will allow you to move from board to board, and it'll tell you how much it's going to cost. You'll also have to have the specific passport as well as the required uh, card that goes with it in order to go to that specific board. And then you've got other places like you got the cops to deal with, hookup cards where you can draw throughout the, the game uh, from your deck, hold over where you can lose turns, you got hook down cards as well, as of course the buyers, sellers, and some other random spaces along the board. Board. Now what's interesting too is as you go throughout board to board you're going to eventually have to go on a plane and if you have drugs on you you're going to have to make the spin to see whether or not you're going to get paid or whether it is you're going to get busted. If you get busted you're going straight to jail uh, and that can really suck. In the game however you can choose not to go to jail and the way you do that is you rat out somebody else. Ratting out somebody else is going to make them go to jail instead. Jail is no fun in this game. Basically what's going to happen is you're going to be put on the board here to start with right here and you have to go around clockwise until you get out. There's certain areas that allow you to get out earlier and there's certain areas that allow you to pay to get out as well as certain areas that are going to make you stay even longer. Jail is something you want to avoid as much as possible. However, if you get ratted on, maybe you're going to need to rat them out as well. As
as you progress throughout the game, you're going to be buying and selling. That's the most important aspect of the game, and there's a ton of money you're going to get. You're going to start off with basically nothing and hopefully end up with billions or at least millions of dollars. There's different types of drugs depending on the different types of boards, and only buyers uh, want to buy certain. Only certain buyers want to buy certain types of drugs, and only sellers are going to sell you certain types of drugs. So you might buy something in Asia, and you have to take it over to Europe in order to sell it. That's going to be how it works. So there's always that risk of getting busted as you're going from board to board. You're going to need to make a certain amount of money, which I'll talk about down below, as well as a certain amount of all of these different blue things. There's a bunch of different requirements in order to win the game of Ringleader, and if you can manage to do that before any of your opponents do, you're going to win the game. Very simple as to how it works, but quite a lot going on, so let's go ahead and show you down below how it's played and how you win. So here we are back to the game Ringleader, and the setup is pretty much complete. We're only going to be showing you one character, though. It could go up to five players, but just so I can give you enough of an idea of how the game works utilizing the boards, we're just going to be going ahead and using yellow here. We'll set these guys over here. He starts with 13,000 just like everybody else would, and I have the die here. We've got the passports and everything that you'd be going ahead and buying over here, and we've got the cash right next to the prison area, which you might have to deal with. And then, of course, there's high society. This is the next place you're probably going to want to go after these streets. So here's how it works. You're simply going to take your two die, you're going to roll, and you're going to go clockwise based on the number that you rolled. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Supplier. Suppliers are good because this is what you need to start off the game with. You're going to need to buy, and it says you can buy five kilos of hash for 4k, or you can buy five kilos of weed for 2k, and it tells you how, what your limit is. So maybe I want to buy, oh, I don't know, let's buy five kilos of hash, and let's buy uh, it twice, and then let's go ahead and buy five kilos of weed once. So you'd use 10k, you would get, uh, let's see here, you get 10 kilos of hash, so there's five and five, and then you're going to be getting five kilos of weed. And then now you've got a little bit of, of a supply here. So the next time you land on a buyer space, you're going to get something. Everybody else is going to then take their turn. And then it's once again going to go to your turn. Oh, I got an eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Another supplier, 10 kilos of hash for 6K. I don't have that much money, so I cannot purchase it. So I'll roll again. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A buyer. So now I got somebody who can buy stuff. So five kilos of weed for 6K. So I'll go ahead and sell that for 6K, and I would take the money from here. And then, of course, we have 5 kilos of hash for 13, so I can sell both of these for 13, and that was going to give me 26K. Uh, so that's going to give me more money that I would simply add uh, to my pool. I'll just go ahead and put on an un, um, unknown amount of money here. There's 10, let's see, 20... Five, ten, so something like that. It's, it's somewhere around there. And you would get all this money here, and then it'd be everybody else's turn. And you continue, however, when you roll doubles here, you can actually take an extra turn. So I would go ahead right after that, take another turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And my supplier again, allowing me to buy more stuff. Now, I can stop here at the airport whenever I want as I'm going past it. Otherwise, that uh, does not apply for any of these other spaces. And I can also stop in my stash house. Stash houses will allow me to stock and store my drugs here so that I don't have to take them on the plane with me because if you take them on the plane, you can lose them. If you want to go to the airport and travel somewhere else, you're going to need to buy certain things first. And this board over here tells you what it is that you need to buy. This one here is high society, which you need to purchase first. In order to buy it, you can buy it during your turn. You're simply going to pay 13K, so you would pay 13K on your turn, and thusly you'll get the high society card. Uh, so 5 and 10, 11, 12, and 13. And then after that, you can buy the passport for 13,000 more. And once you buy that, you'll be able to travel on the airport. It tells you how much it's going to cost 13K to go to high society, which you can travel to there. Uh, West Coast is 11K, Europe, so on and so forth. Whenever you're traveling, you're going to need to spin this die here. And provided that you don't land on one of these busteds, like I just did, you're going to go to the location. If you land on busted, you're going to suffer a penalty of uh, losing some money and drugs. And you're going to head over here to the front gate of prison. Well done. You managed to hit prison as soon as you went from one board to the next. When that happens, you're going to be rolling one die uh, on your turn and moving. So I moved one space and I'm on lockdown. I'm going to lose a turn. So it'll go around once. It'll go around one more time and it's my turn once again. Three, that will allow me to move three more spaces. One, two, and three. I can roll for parole. All right, so let's go ahead and see if I get, uh, get out. I did three. I got escaped. Uh, it's going to cost me a 10% fine, but I get to go back to my stash house. And you're going to continue the game doing that. If you get lucky enough, you're going to go to the next airport. You're going to travel around here and each of the boards do something different. You're going to be able to get these hookup cards. So if you land on a space like that, you'll draw a hookup card, which you can use now or later. This is a get out of free, prison free and clear card. That's pretty useful. Uh, this one over here is a move to any square within your current location. That's useful as well. And then this one over here is move to the nearest buyer square, which can or cannot be useful depending. 
And so all of these cards can be utilized in some shape or form. It's going to help you along the game. However, there's also a uh, Card, there's also a ways you can go and get hook down cards, which is going to be these boards here. These are the more like upper class areas. This one here, as you can see, has just got buyers. There are no sellers here. So you need to actually go somewhere else first. And it says you need hash. So where's the best place to get uh, 500 kilos of hash? We're going to have to go throughout the boards and look for them. Use the uh, airport area in order to travel to that location, buy it, so on and so forth, and travel to the next location. So you're basically uh, laundering drugs and money throughout the entire world, going around the Board, trying to collect as much as you can. When you land on a hook down space, you're going to be drawing one of these cards here, and it's usually bad. Usually it's going to involve you losing cash and, of course, losing turns. They happen instantaneously, and they are not fun. Uh, over here, you're going to have the different stuff like opium, magic mushrooms, uh, hash, weed, and coke, and you're going to be collecting these on the different boards. Certain places are not going to have certain things, and certain boards will. There's also interesting things like magic mushrooms. There's only going to be able to purchase or pick them up in Asia which is going to be on this board over here. And it tells you where on the board. Let's go ahead and see if I can find it here. Oh, maybe it's not, maybe it's not in Asia. I don't know. It's, it's on one of these boards, however, though. And you're going to get it for free, but then you're going to have to travel. Here it is right here, North America, 100, 100, 000, 1,000 kilos of magic mushrooms for free. But you have to travel to another board, which is Asia, I believe, then, where you're going to be able to drop off the magic mushrooms. And that's going to get you money. Now, in order to win the game, you have to completely have bought all of these different things here. And they cost anywhere from like 1.3 million to simply $13,000. Once you've bought all these, the game will also require you to have a certain amount of cash, as well as the fact that you can't have any drugs in your stash house. Everything has to be bought, bought and then sold, as well as owning all the thing. So basically you want to be a rich millionaire with uh, no ties to your your previous drug uh, drug empire. And if you can completely do that before anybody else, you're going to be the winner of Ringleader. Now, like I said, the game uh, involves going around the spaces as much as you possibly can, collecting as much as you can. And there is a certain amount of time period for each player. In the normal game, it's simply an hour per player. So in a five-player game, it can go up to about four or five hours, depending on how it works. However, there are certain um, dip changes in the game that, were made it, that have made it uh, shorter in which you can go ahead and start we'll start with certain things throughout the game uh, I'll go ahead and post it up so you can go ahead and see but otherwise that is how you play the game ringleader and uh, that is everything included in the game and so that's how you play the game ringleader if you can manage to successfully complete all of your objectives as well as leave everybody else in the dust without having to hit that jail penalty you're going to successfully win the game and if you do you can go ahead and stick this little certificate next to you and uh, go ahead and leave it on Instagram saying you did a very successful job at uh, smuggling drugs throughout the world uh, and of course, there's a couple caveats I want to mention to make sure you know. Jail, you're only going to roll one die as you're moving along the board, and you're not going to have to roll the spinner if you don't have drugs uh, on you when you're traveling on the plane. Also, when you have stuff in your stash house, you have to, you're going to have to sell all that stuff off in order to win the game as well. You can't have drugs left on you if you want to become the ringleader. And uh, lastly, there's only so much drugs you can take on the plane as you're traveling around, so you're going to have to limit yourself by putting stuff in your stash, moving back and forth. And like, of course, the game is lengthy. It's one to, uh, one to about four hours roughly in the game, depending on the number of players and your variants. There's also, of course, like I said before, a variant of play. And if you want to, you can shorten the game down significantly if you want to utilize that. So that is the basic idea for how to play the game ringleader. Hopefully you learned a little bit. Now let's go ahead and talk about what I think about it and whether or not you should pick it up. So what do I think about the game ringleader as well as everything involved with it? So the first thing, of course, is what is it look like and it looks really good i like the fact that it has a ton of different boards and it does feel like you're traveling from one area to another area to buy and sell specific types of drugs it has a mature theme this is an 18 plus obviously style game because of what you're doing in the game but i'm sure there is a specific group of you out there that enjoy that specific type of theme you're collecting these passports and whatnot to get around through the world you're not gonna be able to do so unless you collect these and you want to sell as much as you possibly can and buy for as low as you possibly can there is a bit of math in it but it's not too bad um of course like i was showing you before there's a, a big stack of cash here and uh, this is all prototypes so i'm not going to give it a, a review of far the quality is i'm not sure what it's going to look like in the end but uh they have all these different things of cash what i first think they should do is change the color of these things here uh it is basically the style of paper money so some people are okay with it some people are not okay with it but i just thought i'd mention that it is uh the different den denotations like 10,000 and 1,000 are the same color so you have to actually go through it all make sure you keep it organized just like, kind of like Monopoly, otherwise it's going to get everywhere. Uh, the, uh, not only that, though, but all the drugs also have different... Uh 
different values as well from five all the way to a hundred a thousand kilos so don't get those mixed up as well that happened once to us uh, we figured it out pretty quickly though the hook down cards uh basically affect you negatively and they can affect you negatively very very poorly losing turns is a thing that happens a lot in this game specifically if you go to jail as you're rolling dice you're going to be suffering penalties if you land on certain spaces and that's just the luck of the game there's nothing to be changed about that if you get on a good space you do well if you get on a bad space you do poorly however there are these hook up cards and if you could pick these up throughout your travels you're going to be able to utilize them when you want and that will allow you to do certain things like moving forward and backward spaces you'll be able to move to certain buyers you'll be able to get out of prison for free you can move to the nearest supplier so on and so forth so that can help you along your way but still you might run the op the in uh, inopportune uh die roll and suffer that jail cost now what's interesting too is you can rat out your friends if you want in this game and force them to go to jail i like that in theory but uh i don't like it when my friend pushes me into jail and i'm doing very well especially if you're in first place you're going to be guaranteed going to jail over and over again because players are not going to want you to succeed because they want to win the game and that can kind of slow the game down a little bit it would be nice if that only could happen once in a game so they could rat you out uh, that's just my feelings on the matter there is a lot of these different locations you need to gather and what can happen is if you go broke randomly at the game you're gonna have to go back and start getting ranking up money once again which is kind of why it takes a while i would suggest suggest playing this game on the quicker method because it's a roll and move game that has losing turns and all that kind of stuff and that can I think these games work really, really well. Maybe, maybe about 45 minutes up to about two hours. Anything more than that with these type of games for me, I wouldn't want to do it, which is why I like the new variant of play, as well as I like the fact that uh, you can kind of manipulate things with these hook up cards. They're going to be very beneficial to you throughout the entire game. Another interesting aspect, of, co of course, is buying and selling from different territories. I enjoy that aspect of too. The, the theme comes out really well in this game. For me, this is an okay game, um, I, mainly just because I don't like the specific type of roll and moves that will take a little too long, and uh, keeping track of all this stuff gets me a little confused, but I can see there are certain people that are going to enjoy this style of game. This has a harken back to the old style school games of the game Life and so on and so forth, where you're moving around the boards, but it also has a new uh, mature type theme to the game, which is going to bring an interesting new twist as well as a ton of different boards where some player might be in, in high society, some people might be in Asia, and they're just moving around the board doing what they need to do, as well as trying to mess over their opponents when they get an opportunity to. Luckily, there's not a lot of take that in the game, which is what gives me a plus as well in this, because other than just sending somebody to jail, uh, you're kind of trying to function on doing what you need to do as well. Theoretically, you could probably even play this game on your own to see the best route, and there is a best strategy as to where you're going to go on the board, when to use the cards, and how to use them. The artwork is nice, and I really enjoy the box style presentation because it comes with this little uh little uh, suitcase style thing and when you open it up there's going to be the money which makes it look like a suitcase i like that it reminded me of the uh arcade kitty game i was looking at previously that integrated the box with the theme of the game which is another solid plus overall though it can be decided up to you whether you're interested in taking a look at this game it has a lot of things going for it uh provided you don't mind the roll and move aspect and you don't mind the length of time to play the game this might be a winner for you to pick up the game ring litter go ahead and check out the description below if you're interested in picking it up Thank you.